Ender 3 V3 SE. Got one right here. And this is going to be unlike a lot of the uh, unboxing and review videos you see because this is not sponsored. I buy this my own self. Okay, now all the grammar police are reaching for their keyboards. No, I bought this on my own. This was not provided to me by Creality or anybody else. And if you've seen any of my other videos on 3D printing, you know that Creality's customer service leaves something to be desired, and I've had some battles with them. Therefore, I bought this through Amazon, so that if it ends up being a POS, we'll send it back. I'm not even going to try to deal with their customer service again. But hopefully everything will work well out of the box. So why did I buy another Creality printer? Well, this is like the new and improved version of the V2. And I have several of those behind me here. I don't have them running right now. I'm trying to keep a little bit quiet up here. Creality Ender printers are intended to be entry-level hobby printers. They're not intended to, to be production printers. However, I use them for production. And I... I'm really familiar with them and I really know how to work on them. I know all the ins and outs of them. Uh, one of them over here, this one here, I've converted that to a big tree tech control board with the big tree tech touch screen. I really like it. I'm going to do it on one of the other ones I have. Uh, there's a couple other ones back here that are still like mostly stock, but they are workhorses. They do work well. There are parts on them to wear out just like on any other printer, but they have been reliable. Once you get past any kind of mainboard issues or drivers burning out and stuff like that, but uh, I don't have problems with the beds getting out of whack and unlevel. I do check my bed leveling. Uh, one of the things that I saw about this is it has a mesh automatic be mesh bevel ah, automatic mesh leveling system to it, uh, sort of like my uh, Core XY Kitty X Smart 3 back here in the corner. So. Going to get this thing unboxed, put it together. I, from what I've seen on a couple of the videos I've watched on it, not much to putting it together. So let's open this up and see what we got. Now I laid my pocket knife there and I'll forget where I put it and I'll be wondering where it is. Might need it again, so kept it out. So, like most uh, Creality products, are well packed. There's a sheet of foam on top here. You know, tip this up so you can see what's inside. So right off here we have a manual. We have, uh, and it has a little cleaning, tip cleaning deal in it there. And we have some sample filament, uh, alien wrenches, couple little wrenches, uh, USB drive, and some hardware. Spare nozzle. We'll get into that. This would, there's the screen. Of course, we have a power cord. And then this spool holder, if I can get it out of there. So that's all we have in this layer. As you can see here, the next part of this is a gantry. And I will probably set that over yonder. And we have foam. And foam. And foam. And foam. You got any kids? I love playing with these. Well, this is really in there. And here's the bed. And that's all there is in the box. So I guess some things moved around and cleaned up here and we'll get to putting this together. Also comes with a sheet of stickers if you want to stick them on somewhere. If you got kids, especially little ones, keep this away from them because uh, it's hard telling where those stickers will end up at. Our great granddaughter is very good at uh, putting stickers everywhere. So we'll set this off to the side. That's the uh, tip cleaning tool. I could probably put this together without looking at the book, but we're going to do that anyway. Take a look at it. Just uh, 
keep things above board here. Get this unpacked. Have the little sample filament thing that I don't know if we'll use that or not. And we have the cutters in here, and these are always handy to have. There we go. A pair of cutters there. And then we have a package of three screws, the uh, USB drive, and this also uses a full-size SD card instead of micro SD cards, which I end up scattered all over my little work table over here all the time as I'm changing files. That, that'll be a nice switch. So we have some uh, more screws, a spare hot end and a cable clamp. The obligatory little packet of tools they always send with these. And another package with four screws. So to start out, I know that, I haven't even looked at the book yet, I know that the gantry sets in these slots here. Get out of the way. And drops in like so, and then the screws are put in from the bottom, which I'll get to next. With the gantry put in place in its slots, you look down here and you'll see there's some holes. There's three of them here and there's three of them down there. Uh, there's a package of six screws, look like so. Uh, you can either use the uh, Allen wrench that came with it, which I like to call alien wrenches, or you can use a driver like this, which is my preference. And we'll just put those six screws in. Something you got to make sure not to miss is underneath the bed here is a piece of foam on each side. Make sure you take those out. Okay, well it's up on its side. Right here I'm going to put the display on. Uh, it's got a little uh, plastic thing there to peel off. Like so. And that'll mount three holes right here on the top, three holes here. This will mount like this. This cable will plug in up here. Well, find the screws for that. There's a package here with three screws. And those are also two and a half M&Ms if you're keeping score there. There's a little detail as you go to put that in there that kind of squares it up for you. So there's those three. We'll plug this in. It's got a key on it, so it only goes in one way. Don't force these. Have you ever bend them pins? You'll have a heck of a time getting them straightened out. So that's all we have to do there while it's on its side. Now, on this side, this corner, we have two screws to put in on the other Z lead screw. This is belt driven up here from just one stepper motor. So we get this other package opened up. And a couple of uh, little black screws. Also two and a half M&Ms. And they must be stainless because this is magnetized and it's not holding it. Those go in right down here. Move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. Well, that might be out of camera view a little bit, but right there you can see where those screws go. On the lower left corner, you'll see you have a stepper motor here. You have a little plug. This is also keyed. It only goes in one way. The uh, raised portion of the key will be up. Again, be careful. This when plugging these in, you don't bend pins. They should go in with no effort, just like that. Okay, right up here at the back, you'll see there's a almost like a slot, and on your cable will be this black band. That needs to get pushed in, and if you bend the cable, make an arc out of it, and then push it back in, it'll lock right in there, like so. Now this small cable here will plug into your stepper motor up here and again it's keyed. In this case the key side, the raised side will go down. 
That's your X stepper motor. Our belt tension's good here everywhere, so far as I can see. And this also has linear rails, so there's no eccentrics to adjust. And looking at the head here, that's also been pre-adjusted. If you're not familiar with uh, the eccentrics, there is a nut will be on your bottom roller down here that you will need to take your little wrench and adjust if this is sloppy the head is sloppy or wobbles or anything. But you don't want it too tight because if you have it too tight, you put flat spots on your rollers and then you'll end up with little bumps in all your prints. Okay, the next part, and I need to lower my Z-axis down here a little bit. Get this turned around so you can see it. This cable here will plug in right down here couple little levers to pull out and then we'll actually lock it in. Now when you go to put your cable in, don't do this. Don't go over the top. Make sure you go down through here. This is also keyed. There's a little raised key on it. That will go towards the front. That pushes in, and as you do, the little locks will come in. If they don't, push them in with your finger. Now here we got a little uh, bracket or cover to put on. That's in your package with your spare hot end. And this little cable bracket will go over your cable right here. And then there are a couple little screws to put in. And you're switching alien wrench sizes here. We're going from two and a half down to two M&Ms. I'm just going to start one side, then get the other one started. Make sure you don't pinch the edge of the cable in there. Make sure you get it inside the slot. There's a deep side and a shallow side. You want the deep side towards the cable, not the shallow side. That's all there is to that. And lastly, we'll be putting the spool holder on. That's this guy here. You want this facing the front, not the back. You've got two screws left here. So if you're using a ball driver or not using the tools that came with it, this is three M&Ms up here for these two screws. I know you can't see the back side of this, but it's pretty self-explanatory once you see it. And we are assembled. Before you power this up, or plug it in or anything. This is on the back right here. There are two settings, 230 volt, 115 volt. I'm in the US, so of course I want the 115 volt. It is currently set on the 230 volt. If you leave it that way, it ain't gonna work. So we need to switch this. Just put a little screwdriver or something in there, push it over until it says 115 volt. It just turned around, be ready to plug it in here. I already had a cord out, so yes, it does come with a cord. Okay, so ready to power it up. The switch is at the back. I don't know why everybody puts the switches at the back. The only one person, uh, company I've seen with 3D printers puts a switch at the front is Kokoni. And that's uh, not Kokoni, King Rune. So we'll see if we'll be able to read that. Nozzle temperature is too high. Please shut down for inspection. Well, that's interesting. Right off the bat, we got an error. Well, that's great. Okay, I've uh, opened up the, taken the cover off the hot end here. These two little white wires are what's called the thermistor, which goes into the hot end. And that is obviously bad if it's giving me that error. So I'm going to start by unplugging that, and that's hot glued, so that'll be fun. Okay, this is the thermistor cable right here, and I have it unplugged. So when I turn this on, 
I'll probably get an error that the temperature is too high because it's going to show that as an open. And I do. Nozzle temperature too high. So this right here is the thermistor. This goes into the hot end and reads the uh, nozzle temperature. So what I'm going to do is put the ohm meter on here to figure out if this is open or shorted or what is up here. I don't know what the reading should be, but if it's infinite, then we know it's open. So I get a reading of 108 ohms. I put my finger on here and heat it up, that resistance should drop, and it does. So the thermistor appears to be working. Again, I don't know what the proper reading needs to be on it. Ambient temperature in here is 68. Of course, I got my finger on here, which is warmer than the ambient, and it's dropping. We're now down to 103 ohms, 102. So the thermistor actually works. It must not be reporting back to the board properly. And now I get to deal with tech support. And I know this is going to be a fiasco, but I'll take you on along the way. So we're going to call this part one of this uh, Corality Ender 3 V3SE. And we'll, I'll take you along for the ride and we'll see where this goes. Because as I said, I've dealt with uh, Corality's customer service before and it is just absolutely horrible. Uh, since the thermistor does read resistance across, it does change, I suspect something else is wrong. So we'll see whether I get a good response from Corality or if they're going to get this back. So that'll be in part two. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I was hoping this would turn out better. Roger in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.